What up, everyone? We are live here with the Probscast. Thank you all so much for joining me once again. However you're listening to me, whether it be on Spotify, where a majority of y'all are, but remember, I'm also on YouTube at uh, uh, the Probscast. So definitely give me a, a subscribe because obviously I'm new here. And so a lot of surprise, uh, you know, normally I have guests on. Um, that's kind of how I built this podcast. You know, what, what a lot of people don't know is that I had a, a lot of podcasts in the past or I say a lot. I had one more before this. Um, it was called Keaton It Real. It was, it was a while back. It's actually what my personal Twitter handle is. But, you know, I I really do think that I, I built this podcast up really well. And, you know, I'm, I'm not to some standpoint of getting record breaking contracts or trying to do this full time. I have a day job. I do. And for any of the students that are current at Oklahoma State, you know, and, and want something like this, you know, the best advice that I give out to people is to just go out and do it. And, and I really have put my best foot forward and what I've had on guys like Tyreek Hill, uh, Mason Rudolph recently. Um, I had Alan Bowman on. And let me tell you something, I have a lot of guests coming as well. And, you know, the reason I was really doing a podcast on myself, I, I had uh, JC Boyd, you know, she was going to come on and, and she actually uh, canceled on me. Um, she told me that she had something come up and you know, that's fine. JC and I have been talking, I say JC, coach Hoyt and I have been talking for a long time. And, you know, I think she's doing wonders for the program. And you know, I, I think she's a great representation of what, you know, especially with women's basketball, you know, putting up record numbers all of a sudden. Um, I think JC Hoyt really has turned the program around and, and I, I'm really excited to bring her on. So JC, if you're listening to this, uh, which you're probably not, but, um, you know, I can't wait to have you on, and, and I hope whenever you get back from Europe, we can make that work. But ultimately, you know, I just want to make sure I didn't miss a week because last week I was at a wedding down in Galveston, Texas. Uh, I was with a lot of uh, Michigan law students, a lot of Michigan law students. And, you know, with the conference alignment that occurred, it was actually the groom. He was in law school in Michigan. Uh, we both grew up down the street from each other. He introduced me to the Nintendo 64. It's a great guy. It's a great guy. And, uh, but his younger brother, um, who I'm great friends with, uh, he went to Baylor. So, you know, while we were uh, at the, the happy hour the night before, all of a sudden we get home Friday night and then he starts blowing up my phone talking about conference realignment and what I know and things like that. And, you know, I, I really believe that, you know, there's a reason that you're listening to this podcast. There's a reason that I, I, I have some pretty decent numbers behind what I'm doing. And I kind of need to clear the air a little bit because I get a lot of questions Obviously, you know, I, I didn't start OK State Probs. Um, beforehand, I was with Barstool Sports, uh, running the Barstool Oklahoma State account. I was really limited in what my abilities were there. And, you know, ultimately, when I when I found myself with OK State Probs, uh, Will Fight was running it for and Brendan Morris started it. And, um, you know, I they came to me and I was like, how come we all have done a podcast? And they were like, oh, we, we just, you know, we talked about it. We, we might have called it the Probs cast. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to take a whack at that. And. You know, once I graduated last year, I moved out to Florida. I was working for NASCAR in Daytona Beach, Florida, thinking that might be my kick. But then Post of the Purpose reached out to me, uh, NIL Collective. And, you know, they they told me, you know, they were about $30,000 in, in the holes about what they spent to set it up. And I was like, hey, let me, let me handle the social media. You don't have to pay me a dime. Just I want I just, Anytime I want to go to a game, just help me out. Because, you know, I, I love Oklahoma State Athletics, and that's what I want. And they were like, absolutely. And I, and I still haven't taken a dime. I don't want to take money from the athletes. And if anyone knows, you know, I do a lot of social media in general. So it doesn't bother me at all to, to help where I can. You know, I uh, I just want to clear the air there and, and kind of show that, you know, I'm, I'm integrated a lot with these athletes. And, and I'm not paid by anyone to where, like, oh, I got to spin the agenda or something like that. You know, I... I love what I do and I love producing the content that I do. I, like I said in the beginning, you know, I have a day job that I, I really enjoy. And, and I, I skipped NASCAR um, after about a year uh, because I was like, you know what? I can go back. I can get a day job. I can be closer to Stillwater uh, in Fort Worth, Texas, and I can work for folks with a purpose and, and ultimately kind of start doing the podcasting again a lot. And like I said, you know, follow me uh, on YouTube. Uh, I'm also on TikTok. I upload clips there all the time, I'm trying to figure out ways to get paid and then I'm not paid by anyone bigger where it's been anything. But yeah, so I just want to clear the air, make sure everyone kind of knew where I was and, you know, why, why people listen to my podcast and, you know, the things that I hear. And, you know, I, there, there have been tons of things that have, that have been told to me that, you know, I wish I had been running the props cast. Like, for example, Musa Sisi, I, I knew he was going to 
Ole Miss a while for. And I had Spencer Sanders on. You know, Spencer Sanders is one of my good friends, and, and I rarely talk bad about him. You know, I, th- I think Spencer's a great character of people, and I can tell you nor- numerous stories on how Spencer really helped me out and in, in starting this podcast, being one of the you know big guests that I got on in the beginning, and and I ultimately think he's a great guy, and and I and I don't support. Yeah, you know, I support Oklahoma State. And, and yeah, of course, I'm friends with a lot of the athletes. But it's really hard for me to root for other teams. You know, I, I'm wearing an I miss Johnny Manziel shirt. I ordered it from Toxic Tailgate. Uh, they got a lot of wild shirts on there. My girlfriend works for Texas A&M. That's a whole other story. But I had to get something that was neutral that I could wear to the games um, where I wasn't full-fledged. And um, But other than that, you know, I with, with Spencer Sanders and, and all the other great stories that, you know, these, these guys tell me and the interactions that I have um, – I, I think it's a little wild in the college football world. You know, I think that everything said in the college football world, you know, people are going crazy. You know, the, the transfer portal is ruining college football or uh, NIL is ruining college football. Uh, conference realignment is ruining college football. And and I'm, I think that there are some pros and some cons on this that a lot of people are missing out on. And it's almost like what Gundy was saying at a media day the other day was uh, politics uh, and religion are the equivalent of NIL and conference realignment. You know, it's just something that you don't really want to talk about because people are so split on it. And I, I treat it the same way, you know, uh, with politics. I feel like if you're a, a full on conservative and, and you know, uh, it, there, there's there's aliens in the White House or, you know, you're a full liberal and they're, you know, uh, all that kind of ju- uh, unjustified talk and conversations that will never be solved. It's kind of the same thing. You know, you don't want to be all the way one way. You don't want to be all the way the other way. You want to find yourself somewhere in the middle. And I think that a lot of people are missing out on the pros and cons of what has come to surface. Now, obviously, you can point out the cons. I think, you know, especially working in NASCAR, I was in sales. I was was talking to the most conservative fan base you could ever uh, meet. And and one day I asked uh, someone in the office, He's a great guy to me. His name is Phil. Um, and Phil Phil is very talented at his job, but he's a diehard NASCAR fan. And he told me, or I told him, I, I, you know, I said, hey, man, can you name one change in NASCAR that, you know, you enjoyed? And he goes, he, he thought for a minute, and he said, no, I can't name one. And I was like, well, then that means there's a problem with the fans because, you know, there, there's, there's pros and cons to everything. So anyways, with NIL, you know, I feel like, Oklahoma State typically isn't known for having a whole lot of money. Sure, we had Boone Pickens, and a lot has come since, what, two th- the early 2000s? But 2010 is really whenever Oklahoma State started kicking everyone's ass. And beforehand, if uh, we lost the recruiting battle to, you know, anyway, let's say Texas, right? If everyone said, well, he's probably getting paid under the table. Uh, well, if he was getting paid under the table then and you – and you think the NIL is ruining college football, well, then what's the difference with it now? I mean, sure, name, image, likeness. That's how they uh, put a standpoint on it. And clearly I work with Post the Purpose, but NIL really stands for now it's legal. And it's the truth. You know, it's a it's a, it's a whole deal that, that people want to have conversations about that, you know, I, I, I don't really understand. I'm like, well, if they're getting paid in the past, they're probably getting paid now. And I, and I hear a lot of it, you know, and – and I, I don't get upset. You know, I do the social media and marketing for Post the Purpose, and I'm more than happy to do that. I love doing anything that I can do to help out Oklahoma State. It's my alma mater. But at the same time, let's all be realistic with each other on what the problem is. And, and you know, obviously these kids, yeah, there's, there's probably some getting paid a whole lot. And, and I could easily name a couple that we'd lost recruiting battles because they wanted a bunch of money. But at the same time, it's like the guys that ask for the most money – are the ones who wind up in the most obscure places, in my opinion, from from what I've seen, and and watching a lot of these guys, like you'll maybe like not like oh why did they go to Appalachian State over Alabama or something crazy like that, but definitely somewhere where you wouldn't think there were a, uh, there was a huge culture boost or a, a super winning tradition, and they wind up there. Those are typically the kids where the NIL collectors over there will shell out a million dollars for some you know 19, 20 year old to to go play football for them, and and. I'm not, I'm not, you know, trying to give hints of anything. I'm, I really don't care about that. But with the NIL stuff, it's, it's like, well, what truly is the problem with it if it was always going on in the eyes of all college football fans? Um, the next on the agenda, and, you know, we were talking about conference realignment a little bit earlier, is with, with conference realignment, 
you know, there, there's pros and cons to it as well. And, and I, I'm stoked personally, you know, we're, we're going to be able to get Utah, Arizona, Arizona state and Colorado. And, you know, I, I think that Brett Yormark has done an, a remarkable job. I mean, the PAC 12 has been going on for wait, over a hundred years and Brett Yormark, everyone, well, he, what did the Oregon coach say? He's, he was like, oh, well, you know, what What did we really lose by losing Oregon? Well, they're secretly talking under the table about joining the Big Ten. You know, I it, it, it baffles me the way that college football fans, you know, like let one of the big cliches is saying, oh, well, the SEC just has a tougher schedule. When, okay, yes, they have a, t- a tougher schedule. And typically the – the SEC does recruit at a higher level. I, I think we can all see that, you know. Um, but at the same time, it's like, who wants to watch the same schedules over and over and over and over when you have the possibility of now watching Oregon go into Ohio State or go to Ohio State or vice versa? You get to watch uh, USC with Lincoln Riley uh, go into a whiteout game. You know, I, I think that, that that's awesome, personally. You know, I think I think everyone's going to tune into those games, and, and and you know, I see a lot of it. Obviously, I do the OK State prop stuff. I get people responding all the time, and and I and I, I can see the flaws in it. You know, uh, what's going to happen to women's soccer at a lot of these universities? How how are you going to play uh, weekday games if you go to UCLA and you got a game at Rutgers? I I think that that is a problem that they're going to have to solve, and you know, I don't have a whole lot of solutions for it personally. I believe if I had a say in any of it is that they would come out with a commissioner and we'd all kind of go back to, you know, where we started and, and there'd be more regionalized situations. But, you know, what, what, what really drives these, these networks to bring in these huge teams because people want to see those matchups. And I think the majority of people do. It just sucks for a lot of us. I mean, what's going to happen to Oregon State? What's going to happen to Washington State? What's going to happen to Stanford? Who holds? I'm pretty sure at this current moment they hold the most NCAA trophies amongst all sports and everyone's telling them yeah, piss off. I mean, that's, that's wild. For my radio audience, I'm having to take a little drink of water it's getting heated in here. Um, but yeah, I, I don't necessarily see the problem in, in a lot of these conferences adding bigger games. And, and I think that we, you know, you can point the finger and say, Oh, it's because the Longhorn network, you can point the finger and say, well, you know, USC and UCLA really screwed this up. And, and there might be some truth behind that. You know, I, I think that there, there's pros and cons to everything in life, y'all. And if you can't see the pro or the con, you're probably one of the dumbasses that, that can't figure it out. I think people are going to be more than excited to, to watch these bigger games. And, and I, for one, am excited that Oklahoma State gets to go to BYU. We get to go to Orlando. We get to uh, go to Utah. You know, I, I think – it's, it's going to be really fascinating. And obviously this is a network deal. You know, I, I don't think anyone's opposed to that. I mean, uh, well, we, 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 and let me tell you something. It's not done yet. It's not. My girlfriend works at Texas A&M, but she got her master's and her undergrad from at Florida state, you know, and, and she's constantly bringing out where, where's my alma mater about to land. And, and I told her, I was like, Hey, you know, it's, it's the talk of the town right now. And, uh, man, it was the AD or the, the coach at Florida State. He said it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when and how. They're leaving. And and I don't put it any far past. If, if I'm being a big 12 homer and I'm, and I'm rooting for Oklahoma State and the credibility, everything like that, I got to say, I don't think any of the, the schools that we're adding really are a standout university. And it's no knock on the, the schools that we've added. It's really just a matter of if we go undefeated with this current schedule we have, no one's going to consider those credible wins. I mean, OU is a dumpster fire. And, you know, if if we win the last Bedlam, absolutely. I'm going to be fired up. I'm going to be there the whole shebang. But, I mean, it's a dumpster fire over there. And, yes, absolutely, it's going to be a lot easier than getting the snot kicked out of us by Brian Kelly and the LSU Tigers in Baton Rouge. But at the same time, if I'm being a Big 12 homer, Brett Yormark, don't put anything past him because he saved this conference single-handedly. 
And he's a genius pulling Colorado. He knew Colorado would leave. And that's what it helped the Jenga blocks fall. But if I'm being a Big 12 homer, Florida State and Miami, not Clemson, Florida State and Miami are the two schools that I want because even though Miami's been in a dumpster fire for however long, Florida State's finally getting their act back together. I actually got to go watch them last year uh, in New Orleans play LSU. This is before I was dating the girl I'm dating. It's a hell of a game. And Florida State wants to be in the SEC. But ultimately, months and months ago, I can't remember. It might have been the same guy from Florida State. He said it's not a matter of if or whatever. Um, but Florida State said it's absolutely unacceptable that UCF is getting a, a, a more money off of media deals than they are. And the ACC is about to topple. Now, will it be by August 15th? Because August 15th is the cutoff date. I don't know. But I do know within the next 18 months that none of this is over with. And, and I, for one, am excited. You know, I, I would love for the Big 12 to, to have uh, Florida State and then UCF and Miami and then have four schools in Texas. I mean, that that's a hell of a recruiting trail right there. And we all know that Texas pumps the full numbers of college athletes. And, you know, Florida, I, I believe, is second. And if, if you want to go and argue California, sure. Okay, California puts it out there. That, that's fine. But ultimately, that would be my perfect picture for the Big 12 is to go snag those two because those are flagship universities that absolutely dominate in their field and, and look like credible wins. And it's not that far. Now, for other sports, absolutely. I, I think it would be a little oddball situation. And you got to remember, too, you know, a lot of like, – let's talk about softball for a minute. Well, we did a whole tournament down in Mexico last year. I didn't hear anyone talking about that. But I'm really happy I get to do a podcast by myself, by the way. I haven't done one of these in forever. And forever's turn tuning in. I really do appreciate all your work. Um, for anyone who has a company out there and wants some cheap advertising do dollars, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take them. I'll, I'll post you wherever you want. I'll wear your merchandise, whatever it may be, because I absolutely love my job here. Um, but moving on to Oklahoma State, um, you know, I get a lot of questions uh, about what, what I honestly think Oklahoma State's record is going to be. Um, and obviously on Twitter, you know, I'm, I mean, I got, I have, I have an agenda to push, you know, I, I like being the, the big account for Oklahoma state and being the one people refer to, uh, collaborating with a lot of content creators and things like that. But, um, when it comes to Oklahoma state's record, I mean, there's no reason in, in, you know, in hell that Oklahoma state can't run this table. And, and you look at our schedule and, and it's like, okay, we play one Texas school this year. We, we, we don't get TCU, Baylor, Texas, Texas Tech. I don't know how Texas avoided the bullet of Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State, what they Texas has beaten Oklahoma State once at home since 2010. And they, it's, it, I mean, that that's something that, you know, it looks like they got their hand in that schedule, choosing their games. Um, but when, when it comes to Oklahoma State's schedule, you know, I, I think that there's, there's a real methodical way of thinking about, what wins in college football. And, you know, I, I think there's two houses that you can win from. I think that obviously having the best players at every position app. Yeah. That that's what wins college football games. But if we're really getting into it and we want to simplify it, boil it down the, the truth of the you know fact is that you got to have a quarterback. You got to have a coach is the first house, right? Obviously you need some great players around him. Absolutely. O-line, whatever it may be. But then the second house is you need a rocking defense. And the, one of the craziest parts about Oklahoma State is, what? well, we have Colin Oliver, who's a freshman two years ago, lighting up college football. He, he's had three defensive – he's on his third defensive coordinator now. And But Keaton, the transfer portal, we lost so many players. Did we? Did we really? I mean, Oklahoma State, we retained Kendall Daniels. We got Colin Oliver. We went and got Alan Bowman. Obviously, friend of the podcast. He's a great guy. But, I mean, you, you look at who we really lost, and it's like we didn't really lose much. Oh, we lost Trace Ford. What do you have, eight tackles and one sack? And Trace Ford has DM'd me 
you know, and, and I, I mean, I didn't have a problem with him while he was at Oklahoma State, and then I got no problem with anyone that transfers. Like I said, you know, I, I root for Oklahoma State, but I'm also not going to throw roses at someone who's going to go to the enemy, and they, they've been in this culture long enough to know what's going on, Kelly Maxwell, Trace Ford. But at the same time, it's like, I mean, that's my job, and, I, and I, it blows my mind that, that it shocks them. But for the most part, if you have a rocking defense, such as a Georgia the last two seasons, that's going to win it for you. Before that, what were we talking about? Joe Burrow, right? Trevor Lawrence. And there's a methodical way to win in college football, and I think we got the coach right. As a matter of fact, I don't think. I know we have the coach right. Oh, but he can't beat Oklahoma. Jim Harbaugh couldn't beat Ohio State. And this isn't like a weird way of thinking. You know, I, I think that that with, with the, the cards that have been dealt in front of us, it's going to be a hell of a season. Oh, and, and Alan Bowman's a great guy. And, and I figured Gundy was going to end up enjoying the transfer board a little bit more, and, and he's become more accustomed to it. You know, I get to hear it all day long at Post the Purpose, how he's how he's more embraceive of it. And he wants to, he, Gundy loves this team more than, than I could ever imagine, than any of us could ever imagine. And I think that he does get a little lopsided with that because he, he whenever people get critical of him, he kind of curls up a little bit because he's he, he thinks we don't understand, and we don't, you know. We show up on Saturdays to root for what he's been putting together his entire life, and, and I think he does a hell of a job at it. Um, but with with the transfer portal, it's like you no longer have to deal with a freshman quarterback. So he goes and gets Alan Bowman, and Alan Bowman was a stud at Texas Tech. What, he had two collapsed lungs, broken rib cage. I mean, the kid was put through hell. So, I mean – I'm excited personally. But yeah, when it comes to, to Oklahoma State and their, their season upcoming, you know, I'm I'm not the, the slightest bit concerned. You know, we, we have Brennan Presley, uh, we have a deep running back room, uh, Kendall Daniels and Colin Oliver on the defensive side of the ball. Uh, it, it should be a hell of a season. And I and I get to go to a lot of games myself. I get to go to a couple. I get to go to Texas A and M games. I get to go to. I'm going to go to the Arkansas Texas A and M game. Uh, I, three of my younger brothers are in Arkansas right now. You know, I, I I'm going to have a lot of exciting football, and and I'm hyped up for Oklahoma State in general. I, I think it, Gundy plays better whenever we are under the radar, and I think that he does a great job at, at putting together a team. And and I I, I can't stress it enough. But all the people coming out saying that Oklahoma State's going to be terrible. They got gutted in the transfer portal and all these different things. It's kind of like, what, what, what's the real argument there? Because you read something on Twitter. Twitter's not real. People don't talk like they do on Twitter. Like, it, it, it's, it's that's a ridiculous way of, of, of thinking that Oklahoma State isn't going to be that good. But I, I am hyped for competitory alignment. You know, I, I think the NIL, like, arguments are ridiculous because – there are same people saying that they, they were getting paid under the table beforehand. And, and I think that it's going to be great for college football with what's upcoming. So other than that, I really do appreciate y'all. It's going to be a short podcast. I'm recording this the night before. So I really appreciate y'all. Um, follow me on uh, Twitter at OK State Probs, uh, TikTok, the Probs cast, Instagram, the Pro, or Instagram, OK State Probs. It's going to be one of the two, but uh, make sure you like, subscribe. Uh, that's how I get paid and I don't have to go to some, you know, bigger uh, uh, media outlet where they want me to say this and that. And, and I'd rather just give it to y'all the exact way that y'all want it. So appreciate y'all. Peace.